What is up guys? I got many requests in my last video to take a look at this demo that I made, which is like a glass slash distortion effect, which is super nice and it's actually quite easy to make. And so in this video, I want to take a detailed look on how we can make this. And as always, you can find the live demo and the source code in the description below. All right, guys. So the first step to make this animation is to have like the 3D model of your torus. So you could probably make this directly inside of 3GS. But what I prefer to do is to create it inside of a 3D modeling software. So either Spline or Blender. Personally, I like to use Blender. And so my Blender file kind of looks like this, really simple. I have my torus here. Now there's a couple of important things that you need to take in consideration inside of Blender. The first thing is, if you take a look at the dimensions here, you're gonna see that they are in meters. But obviously when you translate that into a 3GS file, it's a bit different, right? It's not in meter, it's actually in units. And so what you need to remember basically is that one meter is equal to one unit, all right? That's basically it. And so I normally want to have at least one of my value be near one. And so right now I have my Z1. And so that looks pretty good for me. Another thing that's important is to have your scale set at one. And so for example, if you would scale up to make sure you have like good dimensions, then you want to make sure to apply the scale. And so you would do like, depending on if you're on Windows or Mac, you want to apply here all your transforms and so that your scale is set at one. And also one thing to note, you'll see that I have a pink color to my torus just to have a visual cue that everything is working. You'll see that if I activate here the materials, you're gonna see that it's pink. And so that's a visual cue that everything is working fine. And then once you're done with that, what you wanna do is export it inside of a GLB file. And so I can do export into a GLB slash GLTF. And here I can call it like torus. And so after that, you can grab your GLB file and drop it inside of this visualizer, which is super useful to actually have like a preview of what it's gonna look like inside of a 3GS scene. And you're gonna see here that it's actually quite nice. It gives you like a piece of code that you could copy and paste if you want. But one thing that I really like to do here is to go inside of the preview here. And I like to actually choose an environment here. When I do some prototyping, I like to choose an environment. And here we can like change the lighting and choose like either a warehouse lighting or dawn lighting or like sunset lighting. And yeah, to actually visualize what they look like, we can go into the React 3J website. And here I'm gonna go in the environment and we can take a look at their storybook. And here we can actually visualize like what exactly are those environments. And here you're gonna see the preset. We have city, dawn, forest. And those are kind of like environments that set a certain light on your scene. And it's really good to prototype and have like a quick good lighting for your scene. And so I'll use that later on, you'll see. So yeah, that was basically a quick introduction to like the design process that we need to do before jumping inside of the code. But now that's done, we can start with the code. And what I have here is a Next.js application. And the first thing that I have is a components folder. And inside of it, I have a scene where I've returned a canvas by React Refiber. And if I import my scene inside of my root, inside of the page.js, you're gonna see that I have an error. And that's because I need to specify here that my scene is a client component. And so I'm gonna add the use client directive. And if I save that, we should have something like this. And now it's good to note that the canvas will take the dimension of its parent if it's in position relative. And so what I'm gonna do here is add a relative position to the parent. And I'm gonna do a H screen, so 100 viewport height. And now my canvas should take the full height of my screen. And there's one thing that I like to do as well when doing Next.js with 3.js together is to use the dynamic import. And that's to make sure that my scene here, which has the canvas inside of it, is only rendered on the client, all right? Even though I'm using the client directive here, this component will still be rendered on the server. And eventually we're gonna have errors with that because most of the time inside of the canvas, we're gonna have things that are client side only that uses things like the window, which doesn't exist on the server and we're gonna have errors and all of that. And so what I'd like to use when doing Next.js is to use this Next Dynamic module, which allows us to basically render a component dynamically. And while it loads, we can have like a placeholder. And that's actually really useful. So I'm gonna import all of that here. And here I'm gonna have my scene, which I do a dynamic import. And here I could have a loading, but for now I'm not gonna have one, but that's quite nice in a real world application. While the canvas is loading all the elements, you could have like a placeholder, which is really nice. But the important thing here is to actually add a flag, which is gonna be the server side rendering to false here. Now I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do server side rendering false. And that's basically the flag that tells Next.js, hey, 
only render my scene on the client side. And with that, we're basically making sure that our scene is never rendered on the server, which doesn't really make sense to have a canvas on the server, right? And that's a good practice. And it's gonna make sure we don't have errors moving on when we start using other modules that are client side only that requires things like the window. And so I have my scene here. I can leave that root for now and I'm gonna work strictly on my scene. And so here inside of my canvas, I'm gonna return a model component, which is gonna import the GLB and it's gonna return my mesh, right? So what I'll do is inside of my components folder, create a model.jsx and here is gonna be a React component. And so once that's created, I'm gonna go here, import that model. And we have to understand now that everything that's returned inside of our model is inside the WebGL context. And so inside of my model here, I have some divs that does not make any sense now, right? We don't have divs inside of WebGL. So what I'm gonna have instead is a group and here I can have a mesh like this. And that mesh here is automatically gonna be detected by the canvas here. And so this is something we can do. And now my mesh here is empty. And what I wanna do is give it some information. And that information is gonna come from my GLB file that I created inside of Blender. And so what I'll do here is extract the nodes that are coming from my GLTF file. And for that, I use the use GLTF hook by React3J. And here I can simply pass the media and then it's torus.glb, right? It's right here. And now my nodes here are all of the meshes that I had inside of my Blender file. And so for example, right now, all I have is the Taurus 002. That's the only node that I have inside of my scene. And so it's pretty simple. All I have to do is deconstruct my nodes and I'm gonna go ahead and select the Taurus 002. And we should have something like this. I see that I have my Taurus inside of my scene. So that's a good thing. But unfortunately it's all black like this. So now we need to add some lighting. And now I'm not gonna put the lighting inside of the model. I'm gonna keep that separated just so it's a bit cleaner. And now, like I said, I'm gonna use an environment. And so I'm gonna do environment by React3J. And here I can use the preset and I have like a bunch of options, but I'm gonna use the CD preset. I can save that and boom, I see my pink color and I'm gonna add an extra light just to add some contrast. I'm gonna add a directional light here and that directional light, I can add an intensity and I'm gonna do like three. And then I can add a position that's quite important to give like the, the shadow that I want. And now it's gonna be, first of all, on the X axis, I'm not gonna move it, so zero. And then on the Y axis, I'm gonna move it up a bit. And then on the Z axis, I'm gonna do two. And that's two towards us, right? So now the lighting is like in front of the scene, a bit higher up and it's pointing in front of like the torus, right? And we should have something like this. And hopefully we can see the difference. If I take off the lighting, you can see the difference here. It makes quite a difference to have like a nice lighting. Like this lighting is a bit flat, a directional light, it's a bit better. And you're gonna see if I remove the environment, now the shadow is just like way too harsh, right? So the combination of the two for me does the job for now. And then one thing I can do here is add a background color to the canvas. And so I'm gonna do style, like very simple background color here, and I'm gonna do black. And now we have something like this. And then I would like to make my torus a bit bigger and I would like it to be responsive, right? If we take a look at my demo, you're gonna see if I move my window bigger, it's gonna get bigger. If I move it smaller, it's gonna get smaller. That's what I, that's kind of what I have here. Right now, it's just like a really small torus in the middle of my screen, which is not the best. And so for that, I'm just gonna import the viewport, which is equal to use three, which is a hook from React 3 Fiber. And it's basically the information about the viewport of our scene. And here I can add a custom scaling and I can do like viewport.width divided by three maybe. And now we have something like this and it actually gets bigger, right? Which is good, but I'm just gonna keep it maybe two. No, that's way too big, four. Just a bit bigger, maybe 3.5. Yeah, something like that. And now I want my torus to be rotating around just like in the demo here, you're gonna see that it's just constantly rotating. And so for that, I basically need to change the property of the rotation at every single frame. So for that, I can do the use frame hook from React 3 Fiber. And here it's just gonna be a simple function here. And that function here gets triggered at every single frame, a bit like a request animation frame. And so to actually target my mesh here, I'm gonna add a ref, I'm gonna call it mesh. And here, just like some good old React, I'm gonna create my mesh equal to a use ref hook. And then I can target my mesh dot current dot rotation dot X, and I can do plus equal 0 0.2, something like that. And now we have the torus, now it's a bit crazy here. So I'm gonna do 0 0.02 instead. And yeah, now that makes a bit more sense. And then now I need to add some text. So for that, I'm gonna use another hook, which is really nice. There's like a bunch of hooks inside of this ecosystem that can do like basically anything you want. So that's really nice. I'm gonna use the text here from React3J. And so here I'll do text and I can do hello world. And we should have something like this. And now you might have an error when adding the text here, even though you've added the scene with the SSR false. 
you might still have an error and I'm seeing this inside of the library here. And it seems that with like the new version of Next, it's like crashing. So it's like a really new bug. And so I'm not sure if when you're watching this video, you're still gonna have that bug. But if you do, be sure to check out their repo. There seems to be a bug with like a certain release that they did. So yeah, now the text is a bit too big. So I wanna reduce the size. And for that, it's gonna be quite easy. I can simply specify a size and I can do maybe 0.2. Now that's a bit too small. I'm gonna do three, three, five. And yeah, pretty good. And for a font family, I can simply do font. And here I'm gonna do fonts slash, and I'm gonna grab my pangram pangram font. And here it looks like this. It's getting quite similar to the demo. It's pretty good. I'm gonna put maybe a bit bigger, 3.75. And now as you can see, the text is clipping with the torus. So for that, I can just do position and I'm gonna do X zero, Y zero, and Z. I'm gonna push it away. So maybe minus 0.5. And yeah, now it's not clipping anymore. So that's pretty good. And I think with that, we basically have the scene that we want. I might want to put the text a bit bigger. Now we've pushed it a bit further away and it's a perspective camera. So the font is actually smaller now. So I'm just gonna put it a bit bigger. I can compare even more. Yeah, something like that. I think it's gonna do the job. And now we can actually play with the transmission material. So I'm gonna go on the React3J website. And here there's a bunch of things that we can use, which is really nice. But for now, I'm gonna use the mesh transmission material here. And basically that's how you would use it. So I'm just gonna grab it, put it inside of my mesh here. And that will come from the React 3J package. And now for the properties, I'm gonna use another library called Leva. And it's basically this library. And it's in like a nice GUI to change like the position and some properties dynamically. And it's really nice when playing around with materials. So I'm gonna use that. And so it looks a bit like this. I have my material props, which I use the use controls. And here the use controls is gonna come from the Leva library. And then those material props, I can basically deconstruct them and do something like this. And so now all of those values are being applied to the mesh transmission material. And I can play around with a lot of values like the thickness, the roughness, the transmission, and just a bunch of other things as well. But those are the properties that I find interesting. And I can save that. And boom, you can see that I have my torus. Now, obviously I have the right values already found. I played around with it. One thing that's really important is to change the transmission. If you want like glass material, the transmission needs to be probably like close to one so that your object is like really transparent. And then you could play around to have like a really transparent, like a bit of a plastic look, something like this, which is really interesting. And you could play with the thickness and then the roughness and really play around and you can just create some like crazy things. And yeah, it's like a really a fun thing to do. Just play around and try to find the right values that you prefer for the effect that you're looking for. Honestly, there's like a ton of different possibilities that you can play around. And I'm not even using all of the props available. But one property that's important to know is the backside. If you want to have like your torus be like a, a bit more realistic, you want to have backside to true. And you're going to see that we actually see the inside of the torus and it looks much more realistic, right? We see like the shape inside of it. You're going to see when it, it's all like this, we see inside of it. If I have the backside to false, it's a bit less realistic, but it depends on the look you're trying to go for. But yeah, that's essentially it. And now with that, we have something responsive. And yeah, it was pretty damn easy to do that. Look at this code, really simple. And that's really the beautiful ecosystem that is React 3 Fiber. So yeah, that was it. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.